Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for being part of our community. My name is Valen Kalika and I'll be your host for today. In fact, let me just uh, share also my camera here. Almost forgot that part. And OK. And uh, just a few reminders before we start. If uh, you have issues viewing the stream at any time during the presentation and you're using the uh, web browser version of Teams, please uh, refresh your browser. If you're using the desktop app of Teams, please exit and rejoin. Uh, this uh, just simply seems to resolve the connection issues with our uh, Teams platform. Uh, please note that this webinar is being uh, recorded and will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at aka.ms slash security webinars. Uh, closed captions in several languages are available during the live broadcast and uh, you can enable them by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen. Now, feel free to ask any questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on the ask question button, uh, but be aware that uh, any questions you post will be publicly visible. If you prefer, you can post your question anonymously and you can do so by checking the box right below where you enter it. Now, we often get many questions on these webinars and we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Sentinel forum at aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel community. We also have our uh, anomalies uh, uh, email shared with you guys for the contact Ashwin's email that is in case you have uh, questions directly to anomaly uh, we love to hear your feedback on how we can improve on these webinars and you can do so at aka.ms security webinar feedback and by the way all the links that i'm announcing have been already shared with you and the chat or the live event q a window I would also like to invite you to join our public community by visiting us at aka.ms security community. That's the best way to ensure that you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. Uh, you'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, which you can sign up for at uh, aka.ms slash security PRP. In there, you can request features, give feedback, review our product roadmaps, register for events, or join webinars like this. We believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So we hope you'll join us. In today's session, David Ampringham, Ashwin Radhikshnan, both with Anomaly team and Rijuta Kapoor from our Azure Sentinel team will take us through threat intelligence in action with Anomaly. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to them. Team, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Valen. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Um, just quickly, um, a recap on the presenters. The first couple of minutes will be presented by me. I'm Rajuta Kapoor, a senior PM on the Azure Sentinel uh, Threat Intelligence team. Uh, followed by me, um, there will be a couple of uh, discussions led by Ashwin from the Anomaly team and a quick demo by David from the Anomaly team as well. So taking a, uh, setting the stage right here for anybody who is not um, her, well versed with what cyber threat intelligence is. So cyber threat intelligence can be categorized into a couple of buckets or categories. Um, how I like to do this is I generally split them into three different categories um, like tactical threat intelligence, operational threat intelligence and strategic threat intelligence. So talking about each of them one at a time, uh, picking up tactical threat intelligence. Tactical threat intelligence is anything like indicators or observed data. So for example, you um, have a list of IPs or URLs or file hashes that you are aware that they are malicious. Those type of things come under tactical threat intelligence. The second bucket is operational threat intelligence. This one is a little more complex and has richer contextual information. These can vary all the way from 
the kind of patterns that an attack is um, following, the kind of tools and infrastructure it's putting into place and utilizing to have the attack carried out. Uh, things like tools, techniques and procedures, which are the TTPs, are something that fall under operational threat intelligence. And the third bucket, which is strategic threat intelligence, um, this is mostly around the kind of actors that are running with um, the attack, the kind of campaigns they're um, running it, running the campaign, the attack against, um, the kind of verticals, whether it be financial or healthcare or IT verticals that they are targeting, things like those. And the last that comes under this is also reports um, which are published about a certain threat actor, their intentions, or a certain kind of attack um, pattern or campaign that they are leading from here. That falls under strategic threat intelligence. Talking about threat intelligence and how it's used in Azure Sentinel. Um, as a lot of you might have heard, Azure Sentinel is a cloud native sim, and threat intelligence is one of those things that's sprinkled all across um, the sim solution. And how, um, let's see how it's done. Um, the first area is data connectors. Um, these are basically roles by which you can import your data. So in um, Sentinel, we have two data connectors uh, dedicated for threat intelligence. Um, one is the threat intelligence taxi connector, which is essentially used to connect to any taxi 2.0 or 2.1 endpoint. And the second one is the threat intelligence platforms connector. And this one is a proprietary Microsoft solution, which is used to develop integrations with most of the tip products um, like Anomaly Threat Stream, um, Threat Connect, and so forth. Um, so that's about how you get the data into the product. Once you get the data into the product, you definitely want to use all your threat intelligence data to get insights into any kind of attacks that are targeted towards your organization. Uh, and for that, you need analytic rules which um, are which basically match your threat intelligence data with your logs. Maybe it be firewall logs or proxy logs, etc. Uh, once these analytics are enabled, they generate incidents which your SOC team members and analysts can triage and prevent any kind of attack that's um, that's currently targeted towards your organization. And as part of that, you tend to use investigations. Um, you want to see how your different entities that are uh, part of a particular incident, how are they linked to each other? Um, you run hunting queries. Um, you can run notebooks, which are Jupyter notebooks and uh, are based on Mystic Pi. So you can use all of these uh, where threat intelligence is spread as well. Uh, then now, once you do all of this, that we also offer some dashboards, which are also called workbooks in Azure Sentinel. And this gives you like an overall picture of your threat intelligence, how your TI is performing, how many indicators you're importing, um, maybe things like um, you are importing TI from 10 different sources. What is the kind of overlap? Um, of indicators that you see between those feeds, what is the uniqueness of a feed, etc. And the last area that I've mentioned here is playbooks. Um, these are things which are generally used for enrichment kind of scenarios, etc., where you don't want to import your complete threat intelligence data into Sentinel, but you want to definitely enrich your instance with TI data that maybe sitting in a third party tool, etc. So for that, you can um, use playbooks, which are essentially logic app connectors. So going forward um, and talking a little deep into how do you import your threat intelligence data into Sentinel and how I like to categorize this into two different buckets. The first one we talked about earlier was also data connectors um, and the second bucket is playbooks and why I put them in two different buckets is because of the kind of use case uh, they cater to. Um, the first one is data connectors. These are platforms that you use to import TI into Azure Sentinel as a product. So you bring in your threat intelligence from different sources into the product. 
Uh, for that, we have two data connectors. The first one is Microsoft Threat Intelligence Platforms Connector. This is based on a proprietary Microsoft API, which is called the Graph Security API. And how the data flow works here is um, from your tip products like Anomaly Threat Stream or Threat Connect, etc. You can push your TI into the Graph API. You call the Graph API, and from the Graph API, it makes into Azure Sentinel to any workspaces that have this data connector enabled. And the th second data connector that we have is the Threat Intelligence Taxi Connector. Uh, this you can assume this to be essentially a taxi client that we have built out to connect to any taxi server or taxi endpoint. Uh, Azure Sentinel supports taxi 2.0 and 2.1 uh, versions, so you can connect to any taxi 2.0 or 2.1 endpoint using this. And through these data connectors, either of them, you basically bring in your threat intelligence into the product, and then you can use it for analytics, investigation, and so forth. The second bucket is called playbooks. And how is this utilized? Most of the use cases we see for playbooks is enrichment kind of scenarios wherein you actually don't want to import your TI, maybe because of the size of the data set or um, you just want to in this case what you do is you develop a logic app playbook that goes ahead and queries a third party um, API and enriches your incidents so you still get a lot of value out of this because you see enrichment if a particular incident is created. So moving forward and going into um, the major discussion for today, which is how Anomaly has built out various integrations with Azure Sentinel. So Anomaly has done um, is a unique is in a unique space and has developed multiple integrations with Azure Sentinel. And these can be divided into two categories again. Uh, one is where you can import your threat intelligence. So talking about this one, uh, first, there are two options by which you can get um, TI from Anomaly. Uh, the first one is the ThreatStream integration. Um, ThreatStream, for people who are not aware of what ThreatStream is, it is the tip product that is built out by Anomaly. Um, it's a flagship product, um, so that is definitely one integration. So it's a tip platform, so for this, you use the Threat Intelligence Platforms Data Connector, uh, which is based on the Microsoft Graph API. Um, we will take a deep dive into this um, in a couple of slides. So going forward, the second integration that we're going to talk about today is the Anomaly Limo integration. So Limo are a free set of taxi servers that are set up by Anomaly, which offer um, a great amount of TI. Um, so for this integration, you can leverage the Threat Intelligence Taxi Data Connector of Sentinel. The second integration, the second bucket that um, I've talked about here is Anomaly Match. Uh, so Anomaly Match is a very, very unique one in itself because in this case, what you do is you take out your raw logs from Sentinel, import it into Anomaly uh, Match, as a product, use it to match against the huge repository of TI that Anomaly has within Anomaly Match. And once you do that, um, the third step, which is also a major one, you can bring in your alerts back into Azure Sentinel and use it for purposes of investigation and um, to, for tri triage. Um, and that makes your organization SOC team um, helps them because they don't have to log in into 10 different portals and look at different investigations, etc. They can bring back all these alerts, which are great from Anomaly Match, back into Sentinel and have that same pane of glass where they look at all their incidents um, so they don't have to look and learn multiple portals in this case. So taking a deep dive into each of these three integrations, um, and coming to the first one, which is the threat stream integration. So um, talking about this one, threat stream is the tip product that's built out by Anomaly. Um, and to integrate with Anomaly threat stream and to bring in TI um, from Anomaly threat stream into Azure Sentinel, um, you can use the threat intelligence platforms connector. 
For this, Anomaly actually has built out an integrator to submit integrators to the Graph API, and from there it makes into Azure Sentinel. Uh, just one thing I want to discuss about this would be this data connector or the Graph API is on a per tenant basis, and this works great for MSSPs who want to push TI to multiple workspaces actually. So what how it works is once you push your TI indicators to Graph API, it is on a per tenant basis and it will make into every single workspace under that tenant that has this data connector enabled. So maybe you have 10 workspaces under your tenant and if you enable four um, workspaces with this data connector, once you push the TI into Graph API, it will make to all the four workspaces. So uh, this is definitely one of those integrations by which you can bring in TI into Azure Sentinel and put it to use in Sentinel itself. So taking uh, the second step of the second integration, which is the Anomaly Limo integration. Um, so as I had mentioned earlier, Anomaly Limo is a set of free taxi server that has multiple collections on it and I generally use this anomaly um, um, generally use this analogy about um, how taxi servers and collections work so assume taxi server is something like a folder um, by a name and inside that you have files um, similarly inside the taxi server you have collections which host IOC is like how a file in a folder holds text data or any data that you have included. So Anomaly does offer a bunch of collections under their um, free taxi 2.0 server. Um, the, I have mentioned the API root URL right here for the, for the taxi server and a list of the collections on the right side, which is right here. Um, these span all the way from fish tank to COVID-19 feeds um, to emerging threat feeds, etc. Um, to connect to this, you can use the Azure Sentinel Taxi Data Connector, uh, which is essentially a taxi client that can connect to any 2.0 or 2.1 endpoint. Very, very simple to configure. You just go into Sentinel. Um, you go ahead and go to this data connector in the data connectors gallery. You will have to put in certain fields like the API root URL, which I've mentioned here. You will have to put in the collection IDs um, which are mentioned whichever you want to. For example, you want to look at the emerging threat feeds. In that case, uh, case my collection ID would be 68. And um, you can put in the credentials, some of the uh, other parameters like polling frequency, which is basically how often you want to connect to this taxi server. And that's it. After you put in certain a bunch of these fields, you're good to go. Um, your TI data will start importing into Azure Sentinel. So this is the second set of integrations that Anomaly offers actually. Now that you've built out all these integrations, your data is making into Sentinel, you want to definitely look at your TI. Uh, and for that, Sentinel has built a very, very rich UI experience uh, where without writing any KQL queries, um, which is Kikusto query language queries, you can actually just look at all your TI, you can create a um, new TI, you can tag it, search on it, sort on it, and filter on it. And how this works is this shows up on and under the threat management menu of Sentinel. When you log in into Sentinel, you will see a threat. This is your view. Under threat management, there is a threat intelligence preview um, area which you see um, right here. Here you can see all the TI that you've imported into Sentinel. Um, you can search for any keywords. You can apply filters. For example, you want to look at all your TI you've brought in from Anomaly Emerging Threats, which was one of the taxi servers that we set up. Or you, you want to um, look at only IP indicators, or maybe you want to look at everything that's confidence 50 or more, for example. Things like that is something you can do um, in this view. Um, one area other that I want to specifically talk about is tagging here. So um, you can 
tag all your TI in this rich experience. A um, lot of the customers I talk to often, they, they use this feature. Um, they have nomenclature set that they want to put certain information about the indicators that they found while they were investigating a certain incident, maybe link back it to a certain incident ID, etc. So the, um, and tags are free form text. So um, you can definitely leverage the, the tagging functionality. Um, so this is a great experience that you can use um, in order to look at your TI without even writing KQL queries. So moving forward, um, where is all this threat intelligence saved into? So as a lot of you might know, um, Azure Sentinel is based off of log analytics. So as part of this, uh, we also store all your threat intelligence data that you import from any single source, uh, whether it be from, say, a tip product like Anomaly Threatstream or a taxi server like Anomaly Limo or any of these other sources that you want to import from, they all make into a central log analytics table, which is called the Threat Intelligence Indicators Table. So you go into logs um, under Azure Sentinel, you will see an area called Threat Intelligence Indicators. Um, you can write Kusta queries uh, for this. Um, basically, look at TI. This is a very, very rich schema, which shows you things like what's the source of your TI, what's the confidence score, what is the threat type of the TI, what's the description, um, the actual indicator itself, which is in this case, you see it's a URL. So you look at URL. When it, it is an IP, it will go to the network IP field. So it's a pretty rich schema that that we offer and um, you can see all your logs um, run queries on top of that. Forward, um, now that you've brought in all this TI, you've looked at your TI, you've played around with it. The next step is putting your um, TI to use for which we you definitely want to power your analytics with all the threat intelligence data. And for this, what Sentinel has done is we provide a set of 26 out of the box analytic rules that come to you as you install Sentinel. Once you have Sentinel set up, you will see these rules. You really don't have to do anything. Um, and what these rules do, they basically match. Uh, they basically match your threat intelligence data with um, with different types of log data. So for example, um, they match, you want to match your domain indicators with say your Azure activity logs. You can do that or all your IP indicators with your office activity logs or your Polo Auto logs. You can do all of this. So all these, if you want to look up these analytic rules, they all show up in the analytics gallery and you just need to search for a keyword TI map because all these 26 out of the box rules start from this TI map keyword. Um, so for example, if you take this one, these match all the domain indicators that you bring into Sentinel with your DNS logs. Um, so definitely encourage everybody to who's using Sentinel or wants to use Sentinel to take the advantage of all these analytic rules. These are KQL based rules, so you can do any configuration yourself. You can add any types of where clauses. If you want to do certain whitelisting, you can do that as well, etc. So um, definitely um, look into all these analytic rules. Now that um, you've used these analytic rules, they're generating incidents that your SOC can triage through, etc. Um, one other area that I want to specifically talk about is workbooks. And workbooks are kind of like dashboards. They give you like a higher all up idea of how your TI is performing into Sentinel. And this um, is basically starting from very basic charts like how many URL indicators are you bringing in? How many IPs? What are the kind of sources that you're bringing TI from? To all the way to things like super important charts like how many alerts and incidents is each of these indicators uh, creating? Um, how many incidents are being generated? Um, you can create charts for that. 
you can create charts um, and the, the best part with these workbooks is these are completely customizable. They are all based off of the threat intelligence log analytics table that I showed you a couple of slides back. So you can create your new charts. You can add charts, delete the existing charts. So basically it's it's a blank slate. We do provide a template, but you can completely customize it as per your requirements. So um, this is one other area uh, that we talk about. So now this was everything what happens after you bring in your TI into Azure Sentinel and you use it uh, for analytics, investigation, etc. So that was all one bucket. The second bucket and the second category is the anomaly match integration. Um, and this is a very, very unique one in itself. And how this works is um, in the anomaly match integration, it's basically a bi-directional flow of data. And how this works is um, you export your raw logs from Sentinel into anomaly match. For this, you have to register an application in Azure Active Directory, which is AAD, in order to have access to the log analytics workspace um, where Sentinel is based off. Then inside anomaly match, you use something called a universal link um, to set up and get configure log sources to get in data into anomaly match. You will see a demo that Dave from anomaly will give us in a couple of minutes um, and learn more about this. Um, once you export your logs and bring it into anomaly match, you can use all these logs within anomaly match to generate um, alerts by matching them against the massive repository of TI that Anomaly has. Um, after you match all this TI, um, TI in Anomaly with the raw logs that you brought from Sentinel, you've generated alerts. Obviously, for most of the SOC analysts, they would love to go ahead and bring this back, these alerts back into Sentinel because they don't want to log into different portals um, and do triage and 10 different um, UIs and 10, 10 different products, right? So anomaly match integration has definitely catered to that requirement. And with this, you can bring in all the alerts that you've generated inside match back into Sentinels for any investigation purposes. And you can generate incidents that your team can go back and um, triage through, et cetera. So this brings an end to end experience for you in all because just because you can take data out, use all the uh, benefits of the anomaly TI that match has and then bring them back into the same uh, single pane of glass, which is anomaly, uh, which is Azure Sentinel to do investigation and hunting and all of the other um, steps that follow. With that, um, I'll pass off to um, Ashwin to go ahead and talk about certain use cases that Anomaly Match has is seen uh, with Azure Sentinel. Off to you, Ashwin. Thank you very much. And I won't take too much time uh, before I kick it over to Dave to get into the fun demo here, but I did want to underscore three main capabilities and some of the use cases that are derived from those capabilities. You know, Anomaly Match was purpose built to give users the ability to leverage all of their relevant threat intelligence. And for Anomaly and our platform, you know, gone are the days of just looking at individual indicators. And we're really looking to move higher on that pyramid of pain to get into some of the more operational and strategic threat intelligence matches that uh, we discussed earlier. And to that end, one of the key features of the MASH platform is the ability to do uh, actor-based matching as well as campaign or even TTP-based matching. Um, you know, one of the common use cases that we see is uh, really around breaking down the silos between the CTI team and the SOC team. So rather than just kicking over specific indicators, the CTI team is able to kick over an entire profile like uh, based on a specific hypothesis, for instance, and have the SOC team match on that basis. So that's a very powerful use case that is uh, really empowered between um, Azure Sentinel and Anomaly Match. 
And of course, one of the other key features is the ability for Anomaly Match to conduct retrospective matching and analysis. So for instance, when a breach occurs, the investigation might only yield a report or indicators 12 to 18 months in the future. And it's very hard in any type of product to go back and say, hey, was I breached 12, 18 months ago? Um, you know, those logs might be in cold storage, uh, but Match accomplishes this very uh, uniquely in the sense that it allows folks to parse out the metadata of the log that is relevant to indicator and actor profile matching, for instance, and then determine whether or not you were breached at that period of time after the investigation is uh, conducted. And want to also include that this is also, uh, you know, empowered in real time as well. So it's not just query based. You'll have a set of alerts, something that, of course, uh, Dave will go through in, in a moment here. And then the third that's very important for our joint Azure Sentinel customers is of course the ability to funnel the alerts and matches created in Anomaly Match back into Azure Sentinel. And, you know, like was explained earlier, uh, the reality is folks don't want more security consoles. Uh, they of course want a unified way to, you know, triage and, and respond to their alerts. And, you know, by leveraging the match detection engine within Azure Sentinel, uh, you know, users are definitely able to do that. Next slide. Perfect. And we've actually gotten a lot of traction and joint customers uh, between Anomaly Match and the overall product suite here at Anomaly and Azure Sentinel. Uh, but one unique example that I kind of wanted to explain before I kick it over to Dave for the demo is uh, you know, bit of a case study, a uh, large telecommunications company uh, in the UK are using it for two different uh, use cases. The first is, of course, for their internal security operations. But again, like was explained previously, also as part of their MSSP offering, um, you know, to empower very highly performant and, um, you know, very expansive uh, threat intelligence matching with regards to their Azure Sentinel logs that they're funneling in. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Dave to walk through the platform. Um, I'm quickly going to hand it off to Dave. Are you able to share, Dave? Perfect. Uh, can you see my screen? I cannot share. I was able to see it just for a second a moment okay. ago. Okay. There we go. I think we're I think we're all set now. Yes. Thank you, Ashwin and Rajuta, for laying such a great foundational overview. And as Ashwin said, Match is uniquely positioned to really augment not only traditional SIMs but uh, other platforms like Azure Sentinel. We all know that it is a big data game when it comes to both tactically and strategically use mass amounts of threat intelligence. Well, in Anomaly Match here, we can see the number of indicators and the number of environmental events that we've downloaded over the last seven days. We have a lot of different preset time ranges which allow us to see matches of not just individual indicators of compromise, but also finished threat model objects. Now you may ask, how do we get the Azure Sentinel data in? It's as simple as leveraging the built-in universal link at which we can open our additional log source and see Azure Sentinel, where we can add obviously the data source name, 
the tenant ID, as Rajuta mentioned earlier, application ID and workspace, as, long, as well as our application secret, which is part of that configuration. When that's happening, we then begin to evaluate and correlate against all the threat model and threat intelligence that we're bringing in. Now, the other thing I can do is I can do the retrospective and go back a year's worth of data. Now you can see I've downloaded over 106 million indicators. This is exponentially more than most platforms can handle in real time, as well as 2.42 billion events. Now this is still just a fraction of the intelligence that we have available in ThreatStream. And you can see that my active indicators that have a confidence level of a minimum 75, I still have almost half a billion indicators available for me to leverage. But the real power comes in when we start to look at finished intelligence. And as uh, Ashwin mentioned, actor profiles. Who have we been communicating with and their infrastructure? And you can see here that all of these actor profiles were updated in the last either minutes or hours ago and automatically downloaded to Anomaly Match. I'm going to dig into one here that's called Lazarus Group. Uh, and as this resolves, you're going to see when the threat model was first created, when it was last updated and downloaded, and the number of observables that have been associated with this actor profile. Not just that, but in that time range, we scanned through 6.38 million events and came across one particular match. Now, this really is finding the needle on the haystack. We can drill into this, but we saw an internal IP address speaking to that external malicious indicator of compromise. It was classified as a C2 IP, confidence of 87, and severity is high. But when I drill in, it's not part of an asset model uh, that I have loaded in here, but we can certainly change that. And here's the raw log. So we collected it from WebSense, may also have come through Azure Sentinel. Uh, we saw that the event action was dropped, but it was still an internal asset speaking outbound. And so at this point, we could do a number of things, uh, even creating an alert automatically, which we will get to in a few minutes, or uh, an investigation within ThreatStream. But more so, when I change the actual time range of data that I want to look at and go back to that full year's worth of data, and I scroll down, I can start to see heat maps of where I'm matching and what may be pervasive and patterns. Again, it's a big data game. And when you start to use finished threat intelligence against all your environmental logs, you will see patterns emerge of when these attacks are happening and when you're beginning to match of certain particular indicator types. We have other dashboards, including match analysis, which allows customers to really start to see spikes and matches over time, as well as matches by feed names. Maybe they're bringing in some commercial vendors or they're generating their own intelligence. I wanna see the amount of matches and victims that those uh, that intelligence is also uh, providing us. You will also see here that we've got the top 20 impacted hosts by risk score. Now within Anomaly Match, we can actually build out asset models using vulnerability scanners such as Qualys or Tenable. Uh, we can create them uh, using a template, but really it's gonna start to show us our match history and timeline with these assets. Now the risk score is calculated based on the criticality of the asset itself and the confidence and severity of the indicators that it's been communicating with. Again, line of sight to what's actually happening in your environment. And a lot of times these indicators are also associated or attributed to the asset or the actor profiles or other threat bulletins that were automatically downloaded as ThreatStream collects them. Now let's take a look quickly at how we build out that asset model. And you will see at every pane or panel within Anomaly Match, we can slice and dice, we can find, we can search, and we can create and save those safe searches. But you can see here, if I wanted to create or update uh, my asset model, I'm literally selecting my scanner, uh, obviously my authentication profile to download that, my template, or I can enter them manually. But once that asset model is in, again, it's giving us line of sight to those assets and those most impacted hosts within the environment. But what if you just want to hunt? This is where the activity pane comes in. You can see I'm searching for everything. 
I'm only going back seven days, but again, let's try that one year's worth of time range. We can start to see pockets of matching the overall counts. I can actually filter by severity of the indicator itself, the confidence level. I can go as far as to say I only want to see uh, successful outbound matches or from a feed source or from an, actually an event log source. So if I change this to event.action equals allowed, this means the communication was allowed uh, through our security controls and we're actually seeing the the matching on the malicious indicators and who the indicator was provided to the classification confidence and severity. But more so anomaly match has actually got some fuzzy logic built into it. So if we're feeding it firewall data or proxy data or DNS data, this fuzzy logic actually looks at domain generation from malware families. Now, if those who aren't familiar with the DGA or domain generated algorithm, it's a technique that malware uses to at scale, uh, at high volume, generate these uh, weird looking domains and it's a way for them to propagate their malware. Now, the time to live in these domains can be very short, but as you have internal hosts communicating with them, Match can evaluate the domain that it's attempting to communicate with. And it does that by looking at the vowels, the consonants, the numeric digits, the, how often that pattern happens or uh, replicates itself and the length of domain. Think of that as a fingerprint and it will score the probability that this domain actually being malicious on a zero to one and it will categorize based on that fingerprint. Here's the malware families that this is most indicative of being a part of. If you don't agree with that, you can at any given time mark this as a false positive so it will never be presented to you in any of the dashboards again. So that's activity. Again, it's a matter of finding your data and matches at a given point. But what if you don't have time for eyes on glass? Let's get into the configuration of alerts. And this is where we can do a lot of things to let anomaly match do the heavy lifting for us. Here's an example. Let's walk through this alert that I pre-configured. I wanna see all of my internal assets who are communicating with indicators that may have a vulnerability associated with them. So obviously gonna give it a name. Here's my source. Is it just threat indicator matches or I do I want to match against finished threat intelligence objects such as campaigns or TTPs or vulnerabilities? For me, it's typically just a threat indicator match and I'll explain why in a second. We can do a simple match. We can do frequency detection, spike detection, or I can build out a lookup list that either include or exclude. So consider that black or white list evaluation and then tags. Now indicators are not always associated with the CVEs that we're downloading automatically from MITRE into ThreatStream, but I can actually look for a particular tag. I wanna make sure that I can evaluate every indicator that has been tagged with this particular CVE as part of its behavior that has been seen by others. Now I can also choose a time range. This is continuous, meaning it's going to evaluate from here moving forward based on all the, the environmental logs that we collect from Azure Sentinel, or I can choose a custom time range. And this is a combination of presets, just like in all the other dashboards, or I can do a relative or I can do a date range, which means if I have a specific window of time, let's say back 240 days ago for three weeks, I can put those presets in and I can set anomaly match to go out and hunt and find any communication with the criteria that I've specified. Now I'd mentioned before about searches like what we were doing in the activity pane, I can save any of those searches and the criteria and just use them here. So they are a building block. Think of Lego throughout Anomaly Match that I can reuse. It's gonna save me a lot of time to set these up. I can build out an expansive alert list, again, to let Anomaly Match do the heavy lifting. But it's at that point, what do I wanna do when the criteria is matched? And you can see here that obviously I'm gonna send an email. I can do a lot of variable substitution with that email. I'm gonna send it to myself. I may send it to the SOC team. I can also list out these events within our incidents or alerts dashboards. But here's what I can do as far as involving Azure Sentinel. I can add it to an investigation. I can execute a script, 
but I can also forward a syslog in the format that Rajuda mentioned in her presentation to where I'm going to send it over to Azure Sentinel over address, address and port that data connector, which is going to collect it for additional log analytics, part of that investigation, make it part of the referential data set for fusion, whatever the case may be. It could be even workflows or playbooks, but it's that bi-directional activity, both from Azure Sentinel into Anomaly Match that allows you to use an incredible amount of threat intelligence as well as environmental log data. I want to be respectful of everyone's time and give us a little bit of time for Q&A. So with that, I think I'll turn it back over to uh, Rajuda and Ashwin. Uh, great. Um, so I'm quickly going to share my screen just for a last slide. Uh, can you folks see my slide by any chance? Yes, I see the demo slide, yep. OK, great. Um, so with that, we come to the end of the presentations and the demo. Um, there are some of the very great, um, very important uh, links that you can use to understand more both about Sentinel and Anomaly Match and thread stream integrations. You can look um, the tech community blog. This, there's a blog that I had authored about the anomaly match integration with Azure Sentinel. It gives you a step by step process of how to set up this in, um, this integration, etc. Um, there are a couple of videos that are um, published by anomaly about how um, matches to be used. What are the kind of use cases? You can look up anomaly match on the Azure marketplace listing as well. And then there's a data sheet that Anomaly has published about match as well that you can read about on the on the Anomaly website. There are links to each of these in the presentation, so please feel free to check these out. Um, for any further questions, you can reach out to myself or Ashwin, Garden, and Mark from Anomaly. Um, with that, there are some questions that came in. Um, Ashwin there are, and uh, Dave, there are some questions related to Anomaly. Um, if you don't mind, we can go through those questions in the next 10 minutes and go from there. Does that sound great, Ashwin? And Dave? Sure, absolutely. Great. Um, so one of the questions that came was uh, for Match, how do you protect the date, raw data that you export from Sentinel and cover data sovereignty? How do you do that? Um, yeah. if any one of you want to take that? Yep, great question. So Anomaly Match is a uh, pre-built OVA. We have uh, various sizes. When I say sizes, uh, resourcing that's required, onboard storage. Uh, it resides in the customer's environment, so network, whether on-premise or within their Azure cloud, they can use it there and set up the resources. So data sovereignty shouldn't be an issue in that case. And uh, they're really not exporting their data outside of their boundaries. They're just using another tool within to do that correlation uh, for them. Great. Thank you for that answer. I hope that helps um, the person who asked that. Um, so the next question that came through was, does the anomaly environment support multi-tenancy? It does, in fact, uh, and that's one thing that we didn't go over in the demo, but um, it can be used for uh, MSSP environments, obviously, uh, and um, as part of the licensing that's applied on the physical appliances, uh, you can determine and set up just different customer IDs. Those all then reflect as part of your searches or search criteria. You can apply it against customers, across customers, if you wanted to use it in the SOC team to generate uh, KPIs or metrics. Uh, so absolutely, it does support um, multi-tenancy. Great, thank you so much for that answer. Um, so the next question that came was um, that the TI that is offered through the Anomaly Limo taxi server does not have a confidence score set to it. It's all set to zero. Is there a way to add a confidence on the Anomaly side? Um, so on the Sentinel side, um, there's no way to add the confidence. Um, with So taking the first part of the question, 
um, for on the Sentinel side, um, as of now, you cannot edit third party into um, third party IOCs. We are working on a new feature uh, which is going to come up where you will be able to edit certain fields from third party IOCs, and one of them is confidence. Um, I'll let Ashwin or Dave take the question about if there is a way to to go ahead and um, change that on the anomaly side. And get that fixed. Um, Dave or that's, Ashwin? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't experienced that. I mean, I use several taxi clients to download from the limo feeds. Uh, in most imp implementations, the taxi client, you can in fact define the confidence level of the indicators from that collection ID. Uh, now, the one thing that I did uh, prove out and test in our environment with Azure Sentinel and uh, Anomaly ThreatStream was I set up an additional taxi feed to leverage save searches. So if I have save search criteria with confidence and tags and a bunch of other criteria, when I save that search in ThreatStream, I can actually leverage that as part of the taxi inter integration, which means even in Azure, I can go and, and query a specific save search in ThreatStream looking for particular criteria and be very judicial and selective about what I want to download and implement into Azure Sentinel. So there's a number of ways, as you mentioned, a little extension to the taxi implementation today, Rajuta. Great. Uh, perfect. I think with that we are towards the end of the questions. Uh, most of the other questions were actually answered by Jason uh, Westcott on the chat itself, so we are good. Um, this is the last chance for anybody who has any other questions. Feel free to post them on the chat so that we can discuss about that. Well, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> this was a uh, great uh, presentation. Thanks, David, Ashwin, and Rijuta. And uh, also thank you, Jason, and the rest of the team who was helping uh, answering the questions. So um, in case we missed to answer your question, or if you have additional questions, you can visit us on our Azure Sentinel forum at aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel community, as well as if you have direct questions to Anomaly team, uh, we have shared the Ashwin's email as well. So um, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars, and uh, we hope to see you next time. In fact, before I end it, let me just see. I think I uh, wanted to see. OK, there's another question here. The last one is there. Is there a reason to choose Graph API over taxi for import, like performance limits on indicators? Uh, great, I can answer this question from the Sentinel side. Um, so for the taxi data connector, there is no limits or any performance. Azure Sentinel is a cloud sim. Um, it's completely scalable, so there is no limits at all on the number of IOCs you can import from the taxi. Data connect connector um, for the uh, for answering the question about why the route of not setting up a taxi server for uh, IOCs. I know the IOCs that are offered through the anomaly limo server versus the IOCs that are offered through threat threat stream integration are a different data set. I'll let the anomaly team Dave or Ashwin take up the question of how these two um, are different from each other. Yeah, absolutely, Rajuta, you, you got that right on. So the limi, the limo feed is is curated open source uh, intelligence. Uh, whereas if you're going to go against safe searches and taxi, it, it can be um, your private intelligence. It could be from a commercial vendor subscription. When it comes to leveraging the data connector versus taxi, it's more of an architectural discussion. And for some customers, they want to be able to deliver intelligence tactically out to their firewalls or EDR uh, security controls, as well as to uh, Sentinel. So that would be an easier data connector route since you would have another component from Anomaly called Anomaly Integrator. Whereas some customers want to go just cloud to cloud. They don't have that other internal infrastructure, so they would use Taxi or leverage Taxi in that instance without having any other components to manage and maintain. Great, thank you for that answer, Dave. Um, I think that's pretty much it. It is. Thank you so much, uh, and uh, we hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.